Hello, good morning, everybody. Hopefully you can all hear me. Um, let me know if you're having any technical problems. We're just waiting on a couple uh, a couple more people to log in. I can see a number of you logged in now, but uh, we're just waiting on the last couple of people. Uh, you're all in uh, muted mode, uh, so I can't hear you, but if you have any any questions or issues with the technology, please use the uh, the questions or the chat uh, call out in the go to uh, meeting uh, application. Um, without further ado, I'm going to get started. Uh, I'm going to uh, introduce uh, myself and my colleague Chris, who's going to be taking you through uh, Fusion's manufacturing uh, extension this morning. So thank you, first of all, thank you all for uh, taking the time out of your a busy day to join us today. Um, so let's get started. So just a quick agenda, uh, myself and Chris, we're gonna be taking you through uh, the, the technology today. But uh, before we do, I wanted to just give you a quick introduction uh, to, for those of you that don't already know uh, Man and Machine and what we do. Um, and then Chris is gonna take you through the technology and uh, give you a live demonstration uh, of how it works and some of the key features and functions before uh, we wrap up. It should be uh, 40 minutes, 50 minutes or so, and then we'll have a Q&A at the end. So let's get started. So let me introduce myself first of all. So my name is Simon Brand and I'm the Manufacturing Sales Manager here at Man & Machine. I've been working in the manufacturing industry for a number of years and Fusion with its manufacturing extension really does offer us a unique application, a unique view of the world. So let me introduce Man & Machine for those of you that don't know us. Uh, we are the largest platinum Autodesk reseller across Europe. Uh, we've got 100,000 plus installed seats of, uh, of Autodesk software. Uh, we're the largest reseller in the world sometimes, but it depends on the exchange rate. Uh, and we've, we've specialized in all areas of Autodesk technology. So Autodesk, like I say, is at the core of everything that we do. Uh, we're specialized in all Autodesk technology, but we also develop our own software. So we, whether that's uh, CAM applications from products like Hammer Hypermill uh, or electrical products or, or configuration products, we recognize that our, we have a, um, a team of software engineers able to develop uh, applications that we can resell as well. But we've also teamed up with a number of other software vendors complementary to the Autodesk and our own software offering, really so that we as Man & Machine can offer a complete solution to our clients from end to end. And it's allowed us to get a lot of uh, accreditations um, around, around BIM, Building Smart and CPD certification. It's allowed us to offer a really uh, a complete solution to our clients. We've recently launched uh, a new website. Uh, we've got lots of exciting uh, content and useful information on there, uh, from information about promotions and product news to, to, to upcoming events and webinars and training. Uh, I'd encourage you, it's a really simple to use webinar. We're really um, excited about the flow of how, how the navigation works. After this webinar, please uh, log on to our website, please bookmark it. And, and come back in the future. We've actually added recently, uh, 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 in the troubled times that we're in, we've added a, a page specific around COVID-19, how our customers are managing to, to work from home, but also with some offers around uh, free training and webinars, as well as onboarding that we're doing. So I'd encourage you after this webinar to find this page straight from our website, from our homepage, and, and see the offers and the uh, uh, what we're doing for our clients. We've got what we've done uh, for our customers, like this one, we've always done lots of webinars, but we found that a lot of our customers want you know, uh, working from home now perhaps, and uh, having more time to investigate technology or, or applications that are out there. So what we've done is we've, we've added a lot more webinars over the coming uh, weeks and months in order to help you um, 
to, to investigate these products. So we're obviously doing the manufacturing extension today. We're going to be uh, doing a 2D to 3D workflow in Inventor next week uh, and CNC machining, 3-axis CNC with Inventor Cam in a couple of weeks' time. Please log on. The other one I'm really excited about is our What's New in 2021 at the end of May. We uh, would normally be running a, um, a, a seminar to, for customers to come along and have a look at the latest functions and features within the product design and manufacturing collection. Obviously, we've had to, uh, to postpone that, but um, we'll be doing that virtually on the 29th of May. So please watch this space. We'll be sending out emails when we've got it confirmed about what's happening and how we're going to do it. So please watch this space. So without further ado, I'm going to hand over now, I'm going to stop talking, I'm going to hand over to uh, my colleague Chris, who's going to be taking you through uh, the technology itself. Chris, are you there? Uh, yeah, thank you, Simon. Um, morning, everyone. I hope you can see my screen all right. Yep. Perfect. Thank okay. You. So a little bit about myself. So let's get this to work. There we go. A um, little bit about myself. Um, I'm an applications engineer for Man and Machine. And, um, I've studied mechanical design. I've been doing application engineering um, with Autodesk software for the last six years, probably a little bit more now. Um, and I was working in a design office for four years before that. Um, my key products would be Inventor, Fusion 360, AutoCAD, and Vault. Um, and I'm very passionate about the design automation, additive, and subtractive manufacturing and generative design. So I guess the big question today, um, for those of you that have joined, if you haven't or aren't already using the manufacturing extension, is, is it for you? Um, and I guess some of the questions that I would ask in that scenario is that, um, do you need more control of your tool paths um, with things like being able to edit tool paths directly? Um, sometimes it can be frustrating using um, any CAM software really where it auto generates tool paths and you just can't quite get um, it exactly how you want. Uh, that tool path to be. Um, also, do you find um, a need for more advanced tool path options? So, uh, or, you know, do you need more than what the, the general CAM offerings can provide you? Um, are you doing any kind of park inspections on your tools afterwards? Um, do you do any sort of live inspections, um, that sort of thing? Um, there's tool sets for that. And then also, if you're using um, powder bed metal additive manufacturing, um, is another one that um, the manufacturing extension provides. So I'm going to jump into some of the features of the manufacturing extension and we're going to have a, have a look at them in a bit of detail. I'm going to show you a bit of them live in um, Fusion 360 and we'll go through them and then I guess you can have a better understanding of what the manufacturing extension provides. So the first one on my, my little list is um, hole recognition. So um, this is a, a feature that came from uh, Feature Cam previously at Autodesk's um, premium CAD CAM product. Um, and essentially, it can automatically detect holes. It's, um, it adds complex drilling cycles. So it's not just a simple, you know, pick up a hole and add a, a, a drill cycle there. It automates your tool selection based on your available tools within your library. And it also um, allows for multi-access. So if you do have multi-axis drilling capability, you can um, use it for that too. So we're going to have a quick look at that um, in Fusion 360. So I'm just going to jump over. So I've got a simple part here um, with some counterbore holes. I've got some regular holes, and I've also got some tapped holes um, on the sides there. So with the setup, I've just gone and added in a bit of an adaptive clearing just to clear out this part. It's a bit of a nonsense part, but it's got but holes to show. So if we go and say the drilling drop down from our manufacturer and milling tab, um, although we do have it in turning as well as, sorry, just in turning and milling. Um, so if I go hole recognition, you see automatically, so my window's popped up on the other side, you see automatically it picks up all the holes within the, the normal three axis plane. Um, it also provides an action list so we can see that it's got a spot drill, drill and countable for the top ones, and then just a simple spot drill and drill hole. I can also select the drop down to choose various options there. I could just say simple drill on that one, for example. And if I go and have a look 
in my tool libraries, I can choose which tool libraries I use. Go from sample, I could say my own library. Um, and then in options, um, this is where I get the, the option to either find angles um, or limit my angle. Or I can simply just untick the limit to set up plane. Um, and then that would allow for it to pick up holes within other planes. So now you can see that it's picking up my holes on the sides. It's also picked up that they threaded, although not the thread that I want. So I'm just going to change my thread type. And I'm going to hit OK and let it generate those holes for me. So it does take a little bit of time to generate, but obviously with um, CAM being the way it is, we can jump over to other things, be doing other things in the, while it generates in the background. It doesn't take too long though. And when it comes out, you can see that it generates each individual um, toolpath required. So it has all my spot drills, then my drilling cycles, it's got my taps. And then on the top, it's got spot drill, normal drill, and then countable for the, the, the countable holes and drilling down on holes. So I thought I'd quickly just show it on another part, although this part's not quite um, ready, but just to show um, my feature recognition, I'll just delete that one and do it again. Um, it is capable on the four axis side of things as well. So once again, on a, a mill turn setup, I've got it coming from the, the three axis or the, the Z axis plane. Um, but if I untick my limit, it goes and picks up all the holes within. If I let that generate, there's quite a few more holes here, so it may take a little while. But um, obviously much, much handier than um, individually selecting each hole, even with the, the, the feature of um, selecting holes of the same size or same depth and, and using those features within the hole cycle. You, you know, if we have complex holes like a countable or um, tap in, we still have to go and do three operations or duplicate our operations. So it definitely saves us time in, in the, you know, sort of generic setting up of holes. Hoping my fusion is going to come back to me here. All right, I'm going to let this load in the back. And like I say, you can. Um, there we go. It's coming. So we'll see. It's generating the different holes. There's quite a quite a few holes in this part. So there we go. Um, so I've got all my spot drills going around, and it you can see how it sets the triad um, and realigns my my plane for me, my WCS as it goes around, making for quite a nice um, simple setup. So you know, although it takes a little bit of time to load on my, my laptop, it's still a lot quicker than going and doing those holes individually. So I just jump back to my slides. Um, the next one is a new strategy that's come up, um, is steep and shallow strategy. Um, it has an improved surface finish, um, or it allows for improved surface finish. Um, you can also avoid dwell marks, um, as it has features for um, wall offsets. Um, you can remove cusps and it also extends tool life. So it's, it's generated in such a way that we can actually um, extend tool life. So jumping over to Fusion again, I'm going to have a quick look at that drill cycle. So I have another part set up here. It's already got a couple um, roughing strategies added to it already. And if I go and have a look in my um, 3D drop down, I can find the new steep and shallow. Right, so um, the selections here, obviously the normal selecting our tool. Sorry, my tool library's popped up on the other side. You might notice that my tool library is slightly different. Um, they have updated the, the tool library and um, the look of it. So if I go and select the tool I want, I'm just gonna quickly go and find it. Which uh, is probably in this part already. Let's see, we'll use my 8 more flat. Right, so um, as with all the 3D selections or the 3D toolpath options, we have the, the geometry selections for silhouette, um, boundary, and selection, so the normal there. We can choose inside boundary, outside boundary, or center on boundary. I'm going to go for outside. 
um, a normal height options, although they don't matter too much in the 3D, obviously just limiting the bottom plane. And if I have a look now in the passes, this is where we get more of the options. So um, for my step passes, I can choose to either climb conventional both ways. I can also add continuous. So if I'm doing something you know, that I want to interpolate as I go down, I can tick continuous and it will run right the way around. Um, on my shallow passes, uh, so this is obviously the flat, I've got two options. I can either do a scallop or a parallel. If I do parallel, um, we get the option for wall clearance. So this is where we can um, stop any dwell marks on our, on our walls. So we can um, actually offset all of our walls. I'm gonna leave it on the, the scallop for now. Then we also have a new tab here. So we, we're all quite used to the, the normal five tabs of the, the CAM environment, but we now have a tool axis tab. So we can choose our tool axis mode. So we can say primary or lead and lean um, from point to point from curves. So, you know, we have a lot more options on what we can do with our multi-axis here. Um, we can also say collision avoidance, and we can also say tool axis limits. Just gonna turn those off for this one. And then our normal linking tab. So if I go, oh, I just want to quickly set my limits a bit. So my step downs here, I want to just set that to 1.5 so we don't generate all that. Um, and I'll leave my step over as is. So if I let that tool part generate, we'll see that it, it covers all the surfaces that are exposed to the, the Z axis. So looking quite good. I might not want it to step on those sides. So of course, I have the option to avoid touch surfaces. And I can just choose the surfaces that I want to avoid. Regenerate. And we'll do a bit of a simulation on this. Wait for it to generate. So this is a more complex tool path. It does take a little more time to, to generate, but much like you know we used to with the adaptive clearing and all the rest. There we go, that looks done. So if I go and simulate, we can have a look. I'm just gonna play it and skip through a couple and just turn on my stock. So I'm going to change my tool path to just tail and I'm gonna speed that up just a little bit. So you can see how it covers all the outsides. We obviously have options to choose whether it does the, the steep or the shallow first, but quite a nice um, strategy if you're doing um, parts that um, allow or require it. Okay, back to my PowerPoint. So next, this is this option is probably one of the ones I'm most excited about, although it's quite a simple one, um, trimming tool paths. So this is where the control of our tool paths comes into play and um, really starts to extend and um, I suppose add a lot more viability to this, this manufacturing extension. So um, we can we get more control over our tool paths. Um, we can trim away unwanted areas of the tool path. We can also select multiple areas at once. So let's have a quick look at that live. Inventor that'll pop up now. Um, right, so if I have a look at the same part and perhaps on my steep and shallow um, tool part that I have here, I've got quite nice coverage and perhaps I don't want to um, recover this area here. So I can use my modify drop down and choose trim and I get my trim menu. Now, the nice thing about this tool is that we can also go for keep inside or keep outside so perhaps you you know you, you've got more tool paths and you just want to have a selected area i don't know perhaps you have a, an adaptive strategy and you just want a certain area and you want to trim out all the rest you can use the inside option to keep and then everything within the selected box will be kept in this case we'll keep the outside and quite simply and it's it's quite important to to align your views in this case we can just go and select the points so i'm going to take up these areas here now, um, just a heads up, don't hit the trash can for delete because that's not going to delete the toolpath, that's going to delete your selection. 
Um, if we're going to hit apply, and now I can go and do my multiple. Apply. Apply. And now the reasoning um, I mentioned having your view aligned is so important is that you can see that it takes from your view plane um, and sort of pushes away from it or normal to it. So, and if I select, you can always go back to restore view. Or if I'm busy mid selection, rather, I can go and store view. Either way, once I'm happy, I can hit OK and it'll regenerate that toolpath with my selected trimming. So we can see that those areas are now outside of my toolpath. So quite a, quite a simple little feature, but certainly um, one of my favorites and one of the handier um, tools to come into the, the, the manufacturing extension. Back to my PowerPoint. All right, so the, the row three strategy that's come in, um, which allows for um, machining of complex geometry within a, a sort of live tool environment. So we can use fourth axis live tool um, or it's a fourth axis live tool milling strategy. Um, very handy because, you know, before when we, we do a mill turn setup, um, we would have to pretty much isolate um, pockets um, in a, a sort of live tooling or um, and, and then do our turning strategies, whereas now this sort of combines both. So we're going to have a look in, in Fusion once again. I'm going to jump over to my fourth axis rotary part here. And just from a normal setup, so my setup is a normal turning or mill turn setup. Um, I've obviously set up my axes and put on my spun profile. So if we go, and it's in, a, in the million strategies, if we go to the sorry, multi axis, we find rotary. So first I'm going to start by choosing my tool, actually. Um, my flat is fine. I'll just use the 8 more flat, that's okay. Um, now on my geometry selection, we have the front and the back options. So we can choose, you know, from the model front to model back. I'm just going to click and drag. So I want to just isolate this area over here. Right. Um, Normal radius selection, so it's much like, a, I suppose, the turning type of selection options that we have, opposed to our normal multi-axis or milling options. If I go have a look at my passes, I have a tolerance and a step over. Um, I'm not going to change them because they're imperial. Um, but that should be fine on the default. And we also have some style options, so we'll go through those styles. So we've got spiral as the first one. And then our normal linking and lead in and lead out. So if I hit OK and let that generate. So we can see my tool path coverage is quite good on that shape. So let's go and simulate and have a look. I'm just going to turn off my stock visibility so we can see what's happening. So down a little bit so we can see how the tool path then adapts to the features within within that selected area. Very nice strategy. So let's see some of the other options there. Edit and we'll just jump over to the passes. So that was the spiral. Let's have a look at what the line looks like. All right, and we'll simulate that to have a look. You can see we get a backwards forwards coverage, which probably isn't the best for this part, but still interesting to see from the strategy. And then the last one from that drop down menu is our circular. We're going to choose circular and let it generate. You can see it's much, much similar to the, the spiral option. Um, following in a circular motion, just following the faces and contours. But so very, very nice strategy um, to come in, especially for the fourth, 
for access machine users. Um, certainly a handy one with the live tooling that we haven't um, seen capability for before, um, well, before now. Right, so um, there's a whole bunch of new tools that have come in from um, an inspection point of view, uh, where I suppose it, it comes in from um, Autodesk's frontline package of Power Inspect, um, part of the, the, the Power Mill um, set of tools. And um, it allows us to control uh, points of contact within our inspection. Um, and more importantly, we can actually conduct live, live measurements or live um, inspections um, connecting straight to our machine. Um, we can ins import inspection results, so we can bring in those, those results from our machine into our model and actually review um, how far or how, um, whether or not we're within our tolerance. And also we can, um, yeah, so review them. Oops, sorry, let's quickly jump back so I'm, I'm not lost on my, my PowerPoint in a second. Oh. Right, see it live. Sorry about that. And so, if we go to our same part we've been looking at, and we go and have a look at um, the inspect tab. So, on our, our tabs at the top now, we now have a probing option. And if I go and choose my inspect surface, so within here we've got our, our probe W. WS settings, our probe geometry, and we can also go and um, inspect a surface. So when we inspect surface, we can choose our probing tool, and I'll just quickly select, and we'll go and take that one. Right, so we've got a safe feed rate that we can choose, I'm gonna say that's 400 for now. And on our geometry, so this is where it becomes a lot handier. Um, before, you know, when we hit probe, we'd pretty much just select a face and it would go and probe that area. Um, whereas now, I can select multiple, but more importantly, if I click and drag on the point, I can actually move it to the area that I want that probe to interact with. And if I go and select more surfaces, I'll that one in the middle too. I can conduct an inspection. Right, so I might not like where they're positioned. It is based on your first click, but there's no reason you can't just go and drag and drop it to where you'd actually like that inspection to be. Okay, good. Um, I can check my height. Um, and also I've got my over travel settings here. So obviously a 10 more over travel and my one more tool is gonna to be a bit much. So we'll just set it up to 0 0.5. Um, and you have certain settings there. You can also change your tool orientation here. So if you want to, you know, change um, your axes, you can also do that if you, you know, come in from a, a certain angle. If I say okay, it generates. So we'll just hit our whole setup here and just go and simulate. We'll just add and we'll put on our stock so we can see. Let that one finish, and we can see our probing. So we'll also see any collisions we may have within the, the probing cycle or the inspection cycle. So you can see my holders obviously colliding with the wall, my tool. So I could I could move that up um, in my in my tool settings. Um, so we can see it's clearly at the bottom. Let's bring that up. This one up. This one also collided, so we'll bring that up. All right, and if we go and say again, so having that that control and that option to be able to move your, you know, your probe into action points, is truly handy. Um, something that you know before we would have struggled with. So I'll just simulate again, and we can see that now I don't have my my collisions with my holder. So very handy to be able to do that um, inside of Fusion. And more so um, is these settings. Now, obviously, I don't have a, a machine I can connect to, so I'm not going to be able to show too much here. And I unfortunately, didn't prepare any results um, for inspection. But we can, we can import inspection results, which will allow us to um, bring in um, 
the points from from the inspection that we conducted on our machine, um, which will then highlight you know red, blue, or green. Um, red for uh, green for intolerance, above tolerance being red, and below tolerance being blue. Um, we can also go and begin a live measurement. So this is really really handy here, where we can actually go and connect to our machine um, using an IP and a port number. Or if we have a serial connector, we can also use that and actually start live monitoring with infusion. And lastly, we can also save an inspection report. So once we've done it, we can save it and it will actually attach the document um, within our um, manufacturing environment, which is um, handy to have, you know, obviously all of our stuff bundled together, all of our information. So that's the inspection environment. Um, very handy addition and quite powerful if you do do um, your inspecting on your machine or even on a um, inspection um, machine. So the last one I'm going to be showing is the additive manufacturing. So um, I'm sure most of you that have connected or joined are probably machinists, but there's obviously the new features for the um, or functionality for power bed, um, powder bed, sorry, metal additive manufacturing. Um, we can select a machine and orientate the part on the bed. Um, we can also create supports and slice, and there's also output to native build files. So we can also um, export from there. So pretty much from Fusion, ready to go to our um, powder bed machine. So we're gonna quickly jump over to Fusion and I'm gonna show you what that looks like. So I've got a, a, the simple part here. I've just taken away our uh, chuck. And if I go and jump over to the additive environment, I can go to setup. Now, when we click setup, it actually is generic. So we can choose from any operation we have. I can go to additive, select my machine. Windows popped up in the wrong screen again. Um, and I can actually go and choose from the, the default machines or the generic machines the sample machines rather that um, Autodesk have added to Fusion. I think I've got the one I want in my document, which is the EOS 300-4. Um, and when I bring it in, it also brings in with the correct bed dimensions. So I can see my part directly on the, on the 3D print bed. So I can also go and select print settings. So if I have Save print settings, I can bring them in. I'll just um, go with any one of the defaults for now. And that's pretty much my additive setup. Um, arrangement is already set to automatic, which is why my parts already arrange itself onto the bed. I do have tools for moving my parts. So just by selecting my part, I have my normal rotate tools. Um, set that back to zero. I can also translate on any of my axes or I can simply just move back to the origin, um, which in this case is my corner. So I'll just move it back into place. And say, so, okay. So a lot of the, the tools that we've seen before, I suppose um, in the, the print studio, if anyone used the Autodesk print studio before, um, are sort of similar here. And we have similar features, obviously the, the the plus side is that we can generate supports um, focused around the, the powder bed machines. Um, so here are my print settings. I can go and set up different print setting options and save defaults. So once you've got your options pretty much set, you can just save them and reuse those as your default. Um, we can add volume supports. So choosing our target area, we can add volume support through these options. So um, the fill-in type, we can do structure or hollowed. Um, we can have a pattern, so we can choose whether it's um, wide wall, punch plate, and then identity of those, um, of that structure, sorry, that volume support. We've got a connector, got different options here, and also on our connection. So if I go and add that, we'll see that it adds it into the supports and I have volume support, which then goes and adds in lattice supports to my um, 3D printing tool parts. So the, 
the key here is that the additive tool path is always there. We just need to regenerate. So I'll generate it now and we'll have a look at what that volume support looks like. Let it load up. So while it's doing its thing, you can also be adding you know, other, other features if you want, or I suppose jumping back to other parts and adding, um, adding more. Um, it does have the multi-processor, uh, multi-core processor support. So, you know, plenty of power to, to go around. Um, it is a bit slow, but obviously quite a complex lattice structure of the supports I've generated. While well, it's going, I'll start going through some of the other support options we have. Um, so we can also add bar supports, where we can choose once again our anchor densities, um, choosing our target, unsupported target, um, so we can choose areas that we don't want to support. And our bar sizes over here, um, being small, medium, large, or custom, allowing us to, to actually specify the size of ourselves. I'm hoping this one's going to go or else I'm going to drop the, the volume support for now. I'll, I'll, I'll drop that one and we'll do a bar support. It'll probably generate a bit quicker. So if we go and add bar supports, we'll once again choose our, our body. Oh, it's chosen our face. Let's choose the whole body. We can choose our critical angle support, um, or our, our critical support angle rather. We have an advanced area filter as well. Keep our bar size small, and we have some options for our bars. So I'm gonna go to solid bar and say okay. And right, it generates our supports. So we'll just regenerate our toolpath, which was actually going along quite happily. We'll stop it and start it again. Let that load up. As always with a, a live presentation, you do it you do it in the practice and it all works fine and generates smoothly and as soon as you, you live, you know, um, it takes a bit longer, but we'll get there in the end. So the you know the availability of being able to add your own supports um, and control them within within Fusion is also handy. Um, we always had the print environment where we could pretty much just send to an STL file um, from here. Um, whereas now we can actually you know manipulate our slicing and change everything we um, or manipulate each individual setting. It looks like it's coming back. Uh, I'll just open another another fusion instance to try and get this to simulate. Chris, Chris while that's uh, yeah. while that's loading, uh, we've had a couple of questions come in. It might be worth uh, yeah, just sure. tackling them while we go. Um, so one of the questions that came in was uh, that there's a one of the people on the um, presentation is currently a SolidWorks user, um, okay. and they're asking generally how how. Fusion handles or works with existing SolidWorks data. Yeah, yeah. So the the, the AnyCAD um, rule applies, even though that's more of an inventive feature. So we're able to invent, um, pretty much import any native CAD formats um, into Fusion. Ah, there my session's working up. Um, so yeah, you can bring in SolidWorks files, Creo, Pro E, um, any of the the sort of generic in between ones, Step, um, IGS, um, and um, the lights. So yeah, pretty much all and any um, CAD data can be imported into Fusion. Um, it'll convert it and you can then use it um, even if it's uh, mesh geometry. So for example, if you, you had an STL file, you can actually do use your mesh geometry within Fusion. Um, there is some mesh editing features and also um, we can do CAM on mesh. Okay. There's a couple of questions that come in, that have come in um, that I'm going to answer shortly when Chris sort of hands back to me, just in terms of um, the, the pricing and, and how it sort of works with the manufacturing extension. But for me, Chris, it was it's quite clear that what Autodesk have done with the manufacturing extension is to take 
obviously we all know and love Fusion. It's a wonderful tool. It's a cloud-based CAD CAM simulation tool, rendering tool all in one box. But mm. what what the, clearly what they've done with the manufacturing extension is to add in the best bits of some of their advanced technologies from the likes of feature cam and power mill and power inspect and maybe a bit of net fab in there as well and yeah. they really make it really push it you know to the next level is that is that a fair fair assumption yeah definitely i um, you know a lot of these features you you would be you know only getting out of the high end packages and the other side of it is it's multiple high end packages so no one package has all of these features um sort of in the same um same all-encompassed one environment type, type feel. So you've got features from feature cam, like your hole recognition. Um, you've got features from um, power inspect and power mill, where we've got our trim um, trim options on our tool parts. Um, obviously, NetFab coming in with the, the 3D printing side of things and the options that we're getting here. So, um, yeah, certainly, um, certainly making a, a big, big difference. And I suppose it's going to impact and change the way the market sort of looks at these sort of products. Um, you know, I, I for one, if it was, I was in any of these um, environments, would certainly be looking at the, the manufacturing extension, um, even if I was just trying to enhance what I'm currently doing on Fusion, as you know, um, in the past, it's been uh, a little limited with some of the multi-axis stuff, and now we're getting a lot more functionality there. So. Um, definitely. Absolutely. Just trying to see if I can get this additive tool path to generate. Um, the other one possibly generate. Ah, it looks like this one's generated. Cool. So we can simulate. Um, and, you know, much like the normal simulation environment, we can see in the, the 3D printing here, it just works layer by layer. Um, I can drag the error up to then skip to a certain point. So you can see how it then builds up my model from layer to layer. Um, then just on the, the outputs, so um, we can we can go and generate, I suppose, our tool parts. Oh, it's gonna regenerate, uh, sorry, generating our tool part. I'm um, sorry, export our tool part is what I meant to select. Now I'm busy generating it again. Um, but exporting our tool part, We have options. Um, or ability to, to, to see the status of our toolpath and we can export to a 3MF file. So that's one of the native, um, I suppose, 3D print formats that we, we probably wouldn't have gotten before for the, the, the metal um, bed printers. And yeah, I suppose we can also still go to an STL file, not that we would need it in this instance, but we could, I suppose, use this for other other printers as well. And um, yeah, I guess that's, that's pretty much concluded. Sorry, I've lost my, lost my place with all my, my loading incidents. But um, yeah, I'm going to jump back to my PowerPoint. And in fact, I'm going to hand back over to Simon now. But thank you very much for your time, everyone. Um, it will be available for questions um, towards the end. Thank you, Chris. That was um, that was really useful. Um, and there's a couple of other questions that have come in that hopefully I will answer uh, now. One of the one of the questions that did come in uh, was around um, whether there's any availability or sort of online uh, training and stuff like that. Uh, you know, if if you're uh, new to Fusion, and what I'd say is is during the um, uh, coronavirus outbreak and since a lot of our customers are now working from home what what we've started doing over the last uh, four or so weeks is to do uh, weekly uh, youtube live sessions on on the basics of how to use fusion uh, so they're all now uh, once we do one they're uh, typically on a on a monday morning uh, once we do one we then publish it to our youtube channel so you can see that we've uh, recently on, on Monday just gone, we uh, did part four, but you can obviously go back and view part three, uh, part two and part one um, uh, previous ones. And then please follow it. It's a 10 week uh, program that we're doing. Uh, so we'll be doing week five, just visit our YouTube channel uh, on, on, on Monday mornings and it should be, all be there. Um, the final point I really wanted to, to, to discuss today was, uh, and a couple of questions came in around the sort of 
pricing and how uh, the manufacturing extension is accessed and how you get it. Um, the first thing to sort of say really is, is around Fusion itself. So Fusion, as many of you uh, know who already use Fusion, Fusion is a, a cloud-based platform that incorporates um, design, um, simulation, um, manufacturing, additive, as well as managing the data all in one platform. So typically, you know, in my history of working in CAD CAM software, you know, e Fusion would be would sort of cover, you know, your CAD tool, your your your, your styling tool, your, your rendering tool, your CAM, your three-axis CAM tool. You know, just right there is is 15, 20 grand of software. Now, Fusion itself is priced in a currently in a very disruptive way at 365 pounds per year per license. Uh, so really accessible, really low cost. And what they're doing, uh, what Autesk are doing uh, with these additional tools is you have the option of purchasing uh, cloud credits, consumption credits on top. And now you get 100 free with every uh, subscription to, um, uh, to Fusion. And, and these can be essentially used for either task-based tools, so things like cloud-based rendering, or some advanced simulation or some generative design type work, uh, just on a sort of pay per use basis. The way that the manufacturing extension is done is on a uh, access based. So you essentially spend 125 cloud credits for a month of completely unlimited access to all of the tools that Chris has just uh, shown. So the, the feature cam, the whole stuff, the probing, the steep and shallow, the additive stuff is all included in that manufacturing extension for 125 uh, credits per month, which is really exciting. So just to give you an idea, if you're doing cloud-based rendering, rendering, you know, um, if you're using credits on top of your Fusion uh, subscription, they're about a credit per megapixel. Obviously, it tells you before you press go, how much you're going to be spending. It obviously depends on the amount of megapixels you're using. Simulation is between uh, five and 25 cloud credits per sold, depending on the complexity of that study. Again, it tells you uh, how many you're gonna spend before you hit go. The generative tools, you know, currently is done on a consumption basis, um, where it's 25 credits to generate or 100 to download the outcomes. Uh, we'll be doing a, a future webinar on some of the uh, more generative design tasks uh, later on. But like I said, the manufacturing extension, everything that Chris has uh, shown today is actually done on an access base. Uh, so it's 125 credits for one month of unlimited access per user. You can, if you already have Fusion, you can obviously purchase cloud credits. And as you would expect, they are, the more you buy, the, the, the cheaper they are, but are typically um, a, you know, a pound of credit is about uh, where, where we're looking. Um, now, the good thing with Fusion is, yes, Fusion um, you know, is £365. Some of you on the call already subscribe to Fusion, we know. What they've recently announced is that they will do uh, now what they call Fusion with cloud credits. So it's essentially comes with 1,500 credits, which guess if, you, if you're any good at maths is 125, is a year's worth of 125 a month for 2,015 pounds, which for all, if you consider what you get, not only with Fusion, but with adding in the, the, the advanced things within FeatureCam and PowerMill and PowerExpect, it's almost 50 grand worth of kit for 2,000 pounds a year, which is a pretty damn good, uh, good, good uh, deal, I think, we think. And that's pretty much it for today. So um, if you've got any questions, obviously we have a questions box, please use that. Uh, hopefully I've answered a lot of the questions that have come in uh, whilst we've been presenting. Um, if you're interested in anything, if you want more training or want more advice or help or anything, please drop us a line. You should have our details. Uh, but for now, I'm going to end the webinar, but thank you all uh, for joining. Thank you all for spending the time. Hopefully it's been worthwhile for you today. Thank you for your time. Thank you, everyone. Stay safe.